So I'll be doing this unboxing in a completely new location that you obviously won't recognize because it's completely new. This is another room in my uh, in my new house where I've set up some lights and I've got a little table. I'm sitting on the floor. It's pretty ghetto for the moment, but it'll improve. Anyway, today I'm going to be unboxing the Co-Gage or Co-Gage Arrow. This is a CPU cooler and it is from a company that I had actually never heard of until they approached me about doing an unboxing and product showcase of their uh, their Aero cooler. Now basically it's kind of like an offshoot of uh, Thermalrite as far as I can tell and so that's kind of like what uh, what an ASRock used to be to an ASUS but that's different now. Either way why don't we have a look at the basic specs of this guy to start with. So I'm gonna get the camera remote man to uh, zoom in on the box here. So it has support for socket 1366, socket 1156, as well as socket 775. And uh, it doesn't say anything about support for... Oh yeah, there it is on the side. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit more information on the side. I'm going to zoom in even further. Oh man, I hate not having a camera person. It's brutal. Okay. <clears throat> So here on the side, you can see it has four 8mm large sintered heat pipes, so those are nice thick heat pipes on there. Next thing, nickel plated basin heat pipes improves the longevity of the heat sink by slowing oxidation. Okay, I'm not sure if it improves the longevity, but what it does do is it improves the appearance over time because oxidized copper looks horrible. Okay, you've got a double fin stack design, provides each tower with impressive surface area, special aero fin design, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Soldered heat pipes and copper base ensure all components maintain the highest level of thermal efficiency. All right, support for multiple platforms, so AM2 and AM3 are optional. Then it includes a quiet 120mm fan and capable of supporting up to three fans for the ultimate enthusiast. 38mm fan will fit between the two towers. Okay, that's pretty cool. You got your dimensions here, and a big one for coolers is always the weight. This is an 825 gram cooler, so that's almost two pounds. So you can expect this to be a pretty big guy. Then you've got pure copper with nickel plating, fan compatibility. Okay, that pretty much takes care of the outside of the box. So why don't we start getting this thing opened up here? I'm gonna just kind of do that a little bit, and that should be good enough. All right, let's get it opened up here. So the first thing we will find inside is a black box. Okay, not at all like the one on an airplane, much more different black box. Uh, Thermal Wright used to never care about um, like packaging, but you can see that with this Co-Gage or Co-Gage brand, and actually with some of their more recent Thermal Wright products, they've actually got like a nice looking retail box, and then they're using black cardboard for the insides instead of just plain Jane Brown cardboard. I mean, packaging is important, whether you like it or not, it is. So why don't we figure out how to open this box, and then we'll go from there. Aha! Just like this, unless I'm mistaken which I could be. But I only have one take to do these unboxings, so I'm just going to have to roll with it. Uh, you know what? I think I might have I think I might have been right. Here you go. Once you open that up, all the accessories just kind of fall out here. So, yeah, let's have a look at everything that's included with the arrow. First thing I find is the important before. Okay, so we have two copies of this, and they both appear to be English. Um, okay, so we have a separate instruction booklet for 1156 versus for 1366, and I'm trying to figure out why that would be. I'll let you try and figure it out with me here, if you can look at the front, because it looks like the instructions are actually the same. Uh, I mean, obviously the back plates are going to be different sizes, the hold downs are going to be slightly different sizes, but the included component list is also the same. So I'm going to open these up and I'm going to just kind of stare at it myself and see if I can figure out some way that these instructions differ from each other. And I guess I can also, maybe what I'll do is I'll hold this one up for you all to look at while I look at this one and then I'll talk about all the steps. So it's an eight step process to install this particular cooler. You uh, put the back plate on, you put the hold, or you put the brackets on top of the motherboard, you put some thermal paste on, then you uh, put the hold down onto the heatsink install anti-vibration strips on a fan, install the fan clips, and install the fan. Oh, this is a cool feature. You can actually install either a 120mm or a 140mm fan, which you can see in this last frame right here. So that's pretty neat. 
All right, so why don't we have a look at the actual hold downs here. So this appears to be one of them, and this appears to be uh, the other one. So the 1156 hold down is also 775 compatible, uh, according to the instructions, although I don't see how that's really possible. How does that work? Okay, well, you know what? They say it works, so I'm going to go ahead and trust them on this one. Okay, so we've got two sets of back plates, hold downs, and then brackets. And then, oh yeah, 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 I see it now. So the 775 one, the hold down is a little bit uh, wider, so that it can either go on a 775 or an 1156. And then this is sort of the more interesting bag because there's actually different stuff in here, although I can't figure out how to get it open. Uh, why don't we do this? Ah, okay, I'm trying not to destroy my table here. Okay, so we have the little anti-vibration rubber strips. So I have one, two, three sets of those. So like they said, up to three fans. All right, then we have how many sets of fan clips? So we have two kind of thicker, thicker looking ones, two sets of those, I should say, four total. And then we have uh, two that are kind of uh, thinner and flimsier looking, and I'm guessing there are different sizes based on looking at them initially. And no, they're not. They're all for 120 millimeters. So I'm guessing one of them mounts to a different spot on the cooler. We've got some thermal paste, and then we've got an included little um, wrench guy here. So that's for, uh, this is great, that's for securing this particular screw. So you know what? That is worth zooming in on. So I'm just going to bring you all the way in. You can check this out. So when you're putting this screw in, you can actually use the little wrench. Or you could just use a screwdriver like a normal human being. And um, that would also be quite effective. So let's get all of this sort of cleared away off to the side. And then I can tackle the cooler itself. Because we've been recording for a while now here without actually even looking at the cooler. Uh, oh, no, more accessories. Right, I forgot. There's a fan. Oh, that's kind of nice looking. Okay, so it's got like a black outer shell, and it's kind of a shiny, shiny black. And then the blades are a, kind of a striking yellow color, which seems like something that wouldn't look very nice, but in person it's actually pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good looking. It looks kind of like the Gillig wings, so I'm gonna, I'm wondering if the hub comes off. Looks like it doesn't, so I'm guessing it is not using exactly the same design as the Gellig Wing. I don't know what kind of a bearing it uses, but it spins at anywhere from 1000 to 1800 RPM, depending on the input voltage. Alright, that gives you some idea what's going on with the fan. And then let's figure out... Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I have no, uh... I have no knife, and I'm encountering zip ties here. Also, I have one more set of installation instructions, and this is for 775. So I'm guessing that will outline the difference in the installation between 1156 and 775. All right, here we go. So let's see if I can figure out some way to detach these. I may just have to cut this clip off in the middle here because that is attached really, really well. One of these days, I'll learn to keep a knife and a pair of scissors handy uh, for my unboxings, but until then, I might just have to interrupt videos in the middle from time to time to go get one. It doesn't happen that often, so uh, yeah, I might just never learn. Okay, there we go. So I've actually managed to remove the arrow from the box at this point, and this is one huge cooler. Okay, so I guess, uh, what can I easily use for scale? I guess I'll use my hand for scale, and I'll zoom in a little bit here for you, because you're going to want to see this thing up a little bit closer. All right, so as the uh, outside of the box mentioned, you've got four heat pipes. These are absolutely enormous heat pipes. I mean, you can look at them compared to the width of a, of a finger. They are just huge eight millimeter heat pipes, and those go down to the base of the unit here. So you can see that it is not a heat pipe direct touch heat sink, although it's debatable whether or not that actually matters. The engineering of the heat sink itself seems to be far more important. I'll do the obligatory finger shot so you can see the base of the unit is quite shiny and I can't feel any machining grooves in the bottom of it. So they've done quite a nice job of finishing the base of this particular heat sink. Now the bottom piece, I don't know if you can see that or not, is soldered together. So you should have pretty good contact there in terms of your thermals and then you know what, this is something that obviously Cogage, because it's a, a sister company of Thermalrite, has borrowed from Thermalrite. And you can see that the leading edge of these fins is actually, okay, I don't know how I'm going to illustrate this, 
But the leading edge of these fins, ah, here we go, you can see it more from the side, is actually slanted down, and then the trailing edge is actually slanted up. And they do the same thing on each one, where they, they are improving the turbulence of the airflow through the heatsink, and they're trying to make better use of the air that moves through these fins by causing it to change direction and make more contact with the heat, actual metal of the of the fins that are attached to the heat pipe. So that's what they're going ahead and doing there. And you know what, I'm going to just take a brief moment here and I'm going to grab the fan and show you sort of all of the different places that can mount. So the mounting system is actually pretty straightforward. It's uh, something we've seen a lot of times before. So you've got a couple holes up in the top of the of the unit. So they're here, 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 and here. Do you use the little fan clips, which are handily included in uh, ample quantity for you. You run those through little holes and then you clip them onto the fan. So I'm not gonna bother doing that on camera, but this is what it'll look like with a fan here. Okay, this is what it will look like with a fan in the middle. So basically you can't see the fan at all. And remember too, the middle is actually quite a bit too big for a 25 millimeter fan and they've done that on purpose. So you can actually install your own 38 millimeter thick fan if you want with this particular cooler. I think that's about all there is to say about it. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Co-Gage Arrow.